Okay, guys, my Forex fund seems to be a topic again, not huge, but it's something I mentioned in the recent video. I did the update uh, on the, you know, prop firm industry. I do once a month, I do an update, everything that happened the month before. But this is the one of the one of the things that popped up in that video. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go and watch that. I think it's the video I did last just before this. But this one, it's the my Forex funds case gets senators interest. CFTC chair must clarify process procedure, right? So this was something that popped up. It was quite an interesting thing. Now, as a result, I've had a lot of people saying, you know, what's happening is my Forex funds coming back. And in this video, I just want to kind of go over maybe kind of like the timeline of how we got to this point, why why a senator is interested in this, you know, what led up to this. So we're just going to kind of do a timeline of, you know, how we've got to this point, because everyone, I think for the most part, everyone thought, you know, my Forex funds, that was it, it was done, it was, you know, done and dusted. But this has popped up now. So it's like saying that, oh, hold on, there's still some things going on. And the fact that an evidentiary hearing on the sanctions order against the CFTC is set for this month, 19th of September, in about 10 days of me actually filming this. So a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, does that mean they, that there's a chance they come back? So let's go over and have a look and see if that is the case or not. First thing I want to talk about is if you go over to the MyForex Funds website, you can see here, they are still holding on to their domain, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, why are they holding on to it? You know, normally you just find this is like, it's, it's a free domain or whatever. But I don't think that, you know, I don't think you should be reading into that. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is <clears throat> I think off the off the back of all this news with, you know, the backwards and forwards in court, out court, the kind of, you know, everything that has happened. I think there has been I've, I've read a lot about copycat sites popping up, pretending to be my Forex funds back in the game and really good looking sites that are essentially saying that, hey, my Forex funds is back. Uh, sign up, uh, you know, we've we've just had these cases and kind of like jumping on the back of everything that's happening and saying that they've kind of like won all these cases and, and they, they're kind of, you know, going again. So do not sign up for any My Forex Funds accounts, guys. Do not fall for those copycat sites. And for me, even if My Forex Funds, the legit My Forex Funds were to open up tomorrow, I would not be buying in because I would actually want to see first, are they actually going to pay because the first thing that would happen is if they were to come back, they would have to pay everyone they owe money. They would have to give back the accounts they owed. So it's, I think it's in my mind, it's, it's, they too forgotten. They would have to come back slowly. So let's say if the CFTC was releasing funds to them, a small portion of it, I, I think the funds they are releasing are just enough to kind of pay taxes and stuff like that from what I understand. But even if there was more and they had some some uh, money, I don't think they're going to be kind of opening up because essentially the second they open up, they're going to be having to spend all that money on people that owe money to, right? I think they would be doing, have to do something similar to what uh, TFT, the fund of trade is currently doing where they, you know, really slowly trying to claw back and I, I just don't see that happening. So be very careful of copycat sites. Do not sign up for any of my Forex fund sites, guys. So let's just have a look at the timeline. So as you can remember, guys, it was about a year ago now. I can't believe it's been a year already. Although at the same time, it kind of feels longer. It's weird. But on, on the 1st of September, my Forex fund shocked the prop trading world by announcing their assets had been frozen by financial regulators in the US and Canada. We all remember that happening. And then later on, when was it? I think um, we remember that the CFTC closed my Forex funds accounts due to the allegation that MFF was defrauding its clients by actively trying to prevent them from becoming funded traders while promising the opposite, right? We all remember all the wording, everything that they were saying on the side, but then they were doing the opposite. They were, ne were never telling people that you were trading on demo accounts. It was uh, all simulated and all that kind of stuff. And this is kind of, this was the real starting point of everything that we've seen in the last year. This is where it all started from my Forex funds, then it was true Forex funds, then the funder trader, and then a whole bunch of other prop firms that we've seen since then. Shut down, come back, shut down, some shut down, never come back. But this was kind of where it all started. Yeah, my Forex funds was where it all started. But anyway, <clears throat> so this happened. Then the next thing we saw was kind of like this kind of case kind of popping up where judge issue, issues opinion in my Forex funds versus CFTC, bad news for US Forex prop firms. So it was this uh, case that uh, district judge Zahid Karishi issued opinion regard, regarding whether or not not, the CFTC had the right to maintain a hold on MFF's assets. So they're talking about the amount they were holding, the assets they were holding, uh, were they in the right to actually hold all of those assets? Because I remember in the, the one that we actually saw, they were talking about the fact that 
Some of the funds were actually tax payments, leading the court to unfreeze a significant amount. So later on, the, the courts did actually unfreeze a certain amount, right? And I think this is where everyone was jumping on, like, oh my gosh, they're unfreezing their assets uh, so they can come back. But this opinion was in a response to my Forex Fund's challenge of whether or not the CFTC had the power or the probable cause to freeze their assets. So my Forex funds obviously challenged the whole thing. Obviously they would, right? Because it was a lot of money that they had frozen. So Judge Karishi ruled that the CFTC did indeed have the authority in the in this case and that there was evidence that MFF acted fraudulently. So I think back then the, the thing was that uh, they were in their right to freeze. But then I think what ended up happening was the judge unfroze a bulk of the financial assets belonging to MFF and its CEO, Murtuza Kazmi, but only 12.1 million remained under the CFTC control. So they had unfrozen some of it, but I think a lot of it was, you know, in and around taxes and all that kind of stuff and things that they, they had to pay anyway. So at no point here was there any kind of thing that my Forex funds was coming back and they were going to basically kind of do this, you know, kind of big comeback. At no point was that a thing. So at this point, you know, they were talking about the, the relief of, of them getting some of their, their funds unfrozen. Also talking about my Forex funds, you know, being one step closer to being able to process refunds and payouts. So this was also a big topic then basically saying if they get funds refrozen, that should be the first port of call. They've got to then pay the people they owe money to, right? So this is the thing, you know, I, I think at that point they were fighting for the unfreezing. But at the same time, the second money gets unfrozen. The first thing people would be expecting is for them to pay the people they owe money to, right? So this kind of, yeah, you know, this is what what happened there, and this was where they they kind of there was this whole thing of the the whole gray area prop firms engaging in real trading. You know, there there was that gray area, and this kind of brought light. This whole thing brought light to that gray area, and the gray area was these prop firms were running sort of aside of the regulatory bodies you know not being regulated because they were saying you know it's not real trading but the the judge and the court and the rulings were basically saying that the environment may have been simulated but the trading was real they were saying that the trading was real because the people that had even though they were simulated accounts they were funded accounts and they'd worked hard to get these so they're, they're basically saying that even though you know they were trying to use that whole gray area of it's not real trading the fact of the matter was the people that had funded accounts were actually trading for real money they were trading a live account according to them it was a funded account which made it feel like it was live even though it wasn't because at the end of the day they were trading for real money they were trading for a withdrawal for a payout right so it was real and that made it very real and that was where i think the courts and the judge kind of said that this is they were trading for real so this was kind of where i think that gray area really was kind of like squished and said you know this is real trading and you've got to be very clear with your traders and that's why all the the, the text and the copy on all these websites started changing and people were had had to be very clear these companies had to be very clear about the fact that these were uh, not real accounts they had to change their their copy but it didn't really change the fact that when we traded these funded accounts they, they were real you know anyway let's move on next in the timeline we had my forex funds investigation rattled by cftc commissioner exposing staff miscon misconduct so this came up i think it was around july of this year where they were talking about the commissioner highlights potential false statements made in court so there's all these things coming up around the court hearing in the court case between CFTC and my Forex funds. So at this point, it was Commissioner Carolyn Pham that called for an action on alleged misconduct in the my uh, the my forex funds case okay so this kind of brought light to the fact that there was some things that were mishandled there was some misconduct in the case there was allegations made in the rule 11 sanction motion filed in the cftc versus traders global the motion reportedly accused cftc staff of making false statements in the court over a six-month period so on the cft site they've got all of the documents so if you want to kind of get deeper into the case and what's happening you know i'm not going to go over everything i'm just trying to kind of give a brief timeline on what happened so this came up where they were talking about some misconduct you know within the actual the case itself so with all this going on i think this is where this came up where my forex funds case gets senators interest cftc chair must clarify process procedure right so i think everything that i kind of led up to this point 
was basically where this article came up from, right? So the MyForex Funds case drew the attention of the US Senator Chuck Grace Grassley, who has questioned the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, about its handling of the situation. Now, as a result, all of this, basically what happened is that there's an evidentiary hearing on the sanctions order against the CFTC, which is set for later this month. But I think this is more a clarification of everything that has gone up till this point. I don't think in any way this is going to be like, oh, wow, it's an amazing thing for my Forex funds. I just think they are basically sorting out some of the things and how things were handled. But it doesn't necessarily change the fact that what my Forex funds did wrong is still wrong and they're not going to basically be able to come back. So I think the whole thing of is my Forex funds coming back? I honestly don't think they will ever come back, but who knows, you know, let's see what happens with this hearing in 10 days time. Um, but I don't think my Forex funds is going to come back, whether they actually come back in some form to kind of pay some of the people back. But even that I think is, you know, I, I've written off my Forex funds a long time ago. So I'm sorry if you guys actually thought that my Forex funds was coming back, but unfortunately, I just don't think that's going to happen. One thing I do want to state very, very clearly in this, guys, is do not fall victim for any of these copy cat sites okay now off the back of all of this stuff happening and i haven't even really gone that deep into it because i think there's a lot more that's happened in the in the background i just wanted to kind of like go over the timeline as to you know why that this article that i mentioned why this actually did come up be very careful of those copycat sites guys because there are sites out there that are pretending to be my forex funds that have come back and they look legit they look very very good these websites you know but obviously people are paying are not obviously getting any accounts getting anywhere maybe they're pretending like they're taking accounts and they've got something set up i've not really looked too deeply into that but just do not sign up for anything my forex funds related guys okay so that's the update on that guys uh, my forex funds in my honest opinion will not come back i don't think we'll ever see uh, my forex funds trading again i would like to actually know from you guys you know anyone that did trade with my forex funds you know how much did you lose? Because I, I hear a lot of people saying I lost so much my Forex funds. I hear people saying I lost $400,000. But the thing is, like I had two, two or three, I can't even remember, I think two, at least two hundred thousand dollar accounts that I lost, but I never lost two hundred thousand dollars. Essentially, I lost the opportunity to trade with that capital. So it's, you got to be quite clear with how you actually see this, you know, and I never actually lost anything because I did get a few payouts that essentially covered all all the costs that I put into my Forex funds. Um, I think the people that, you know, it hit the hardest were the people that had lost money, got to a funded account and maybe were waiting for a payout where that actually made their money and then it's, it closed. I think those are probably the people that hit the hardest. But let me know, what's your story, guys? How did it go for you guys? Did you have money? Did you lose money? Did you lose accounts? How much did you lose? I'd love to hear your stories. Uh, like I said, I lost 200,000, but I didn't lose. I just lost the opportunity to trade. So yeah, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, didn't go too deep into this. If you want to see it, make sure you go and have a look at these articles. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please do make sure you hit that little like button. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot more great content coming up. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to leave you there. Thank you very much. Happy trading in the future. Bye for now.